This is Bike World. Coming up on this week's show, Susie gets out her bucket and spade and heads off to the beach. And we have another fantastic competition for you. But first, I take a little trip to Belgium. Now, most of you know Belgium for its world famous beer, chocolate, and for being the center of the European Union. But did you know it also plays home to one of the oldest motorcycle clothing manufacturers in the world? And they're a company with a bit of a story to tell. So we came to Oudenaarde in Belgium to Riche's head office to chat to the owner, Luc Rieger. So Luc, tell us a little bit about the history of Riche and how it came about. Well, it's a quite long history because we are going now, uh, we are already now in the third generation. So Risha started almost uh, now 50 years ago. Uh, my uh, father was a glove manufacturer. Uh, in the year 70, we uh, swift over to uh, fashion garments and uh, in leather. So we remained in the same business, leather. And uh, I was a, a frequent motorcycle driver. And I thought to myself and I spoke to my father, should we not start to make motorcycle garments? We started to make our own collections and uh, we went, uh, we did exhibitions and uh, that's why we started. We are successful, we are, uh, let's say, in uh, 25 uh, countries now. We are also trying to get in the South American market, uh, but in Europe we are quite uh, strong and respectable uh, company. It's been a company philosophy, as you say, you're the second generation. You actually have, uh, you're third generation, your son's working for you. And we'll come on to that in just a bit. But it's interesting because Risha now, as you say, very well known for its motorcycle clothing, but you still do the fashionable clothing as well. Well, yes, we kept that because uh, it's very interesting, as I said before, uh, we keep, we take a lot of ideas of the fashion. Uh, safety is just a different part, but fashion still is, a, is an, an important issue in the motorcycle and more and more becomes it an important issue in the motorcycle garments and uh, people likes to wear, they likes to feel themselves as they wear a normal uh, fashion jacket. It's Sten is the son who, as you say, is pretty yes. much going to be uh, in charge of the collections. Would he be the best person to talk us through some of your highlights of the 2014 range, do you think? Yeah, he made, uh, let's say, uh, for 80%, he kept himself busy with, uh, with the highlights of the 2014 collection and now already busy with uh, finalising the 2015 collection. Yeah. So, Sten, you've picked out for us some highlights of the 2014 Risha motorcycle clothing range. Uh, let's kick off with this. It's a rather cool-looking retro jacket. It's a retro racing jacket. That's the name of the model. It's our premium uh, custom... Uh, casual leather jacket with we use the uh, vintage full grain guinean leather as every single richard jacket it comes with the five pieces full armor so which includes the uh, shoulder elbow and back protection it it also has a removable well detachable in a liner, thermal yeah. liner it comes uh, in two colorways yes. the black one and uh, of course the retro brown one. retro brown one so sten up next, you've picked something a little bit more sporty, haven't you? Yes, exactly. This is our um, ballistic Evo jacket. It's actually the, the successor of the ballistic jacket. It has the uh, three-layer structure, which mean, means it, um, it has a removable, detachable thermal liner. Yeah. And at the same time, it has the removable, waterproof, waterproof three-layer yeah. three membrane. Outer shell is made out of cow guinean leather yeah. so again, but with some textile as well isn't it? it's a mix it's mixed with textile this textile is actually a ballistic fabric okay. which means it has more um, it's more resistant to abrasion, abrasion. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the whole 2014 range of Richa, we used again the central back protector the shoulder and elbow in the five pieces armor uh, to offer the maximum protection. See, that's a really big thing, isn't it? We've obviously focused on D3O before. It is a wonder kind of yeah. substance that hardens on impact and it is perfect yes. for motorcycle protection because yeah. it's soft and flexible when you're riding, but as soon as you get in trouble, it goes stiff and protects you. And that's in the whole of your 2014 range. In the whole range. This jacket is the Airstream jacket, so the name speaks for itself. It's a jacket who has more air vent capabilities. So this jacket comes with the, again, with the detachable Winter thermal liner, mm -hmm. so this one can be removed, and then we have the uh, detachable waterproof membrane. Yep. This membrane is a 10,000 millimeter membrane, so it means the water column can resist. So the whole arm and waist um, is made out of um, perforated fabric, mm -hmm. resistant to abrasion, so it doesn't 
sacrificing the safety. But obviously it gives you lots of um, airflow through the yes, jacket as well. Exactly. Again, it comes with the full D3O armor protection. The back protector is covered yeah, with yeah. some uh, 3D foam, mm -hmm. which actually uh, avoids that the back starts to be very sweaty against the back protector. Okay. Cool. Again, some nice details on the inside. Uh, phone pocket, wallet pocket. That's cool. Yeah, even if the, even when you remove the uh, thermal liner on the outside, you, you still have and all the storage. Inside. Different color combinations. This is the black red one. Mm -hmm. We have the fluorescent black. We have the uh, full black version, and then we have the black white version. This is our Touareg jacket. It's our top range, um, let's say, uh, dual sport touring jacket. It offers uh, a lot of features. It's a very technical jacket. Uh, as you see from the outside, it has the, um, a lot of air vent capabilities. So you have the shoulder air vents, the, um, the frontal air vents, yeah. even those front panels. Just <laughs> actually they're pockets, which can be removed. That's kind of cool as well. Yeah. So it's like a wallet pocket. Like yeah. a wallet. You don't lose them because there's uh, an extra storage room in the front of the jacket here. So you can. <laughs> That's very clever actually, yeah. yeah. Uh, the fabric on the outside, it has a very technical fabric, it's the 600 Diener Carbolex. It offers a lot of safety uh, protection in the sense of abrasion resistance. The outside is protected with the ripstop, 600 Diener. On the inside, it's a traditional 3-in-1. We call this a 3-in-1 as it has the removable, highly breathable membrane. As you can see from yeah, the waterproof lining. Yeah. Waterproof lining. Again, with D3O, full armor protection, some air vent zippers, a lot of reflective yep. material, even a big back, backside pocket. If you ride with the jacket open in the summer, you can easily fix the collar so it doesn't hit your helmet. Yeah, not flap it about on your neck, giving you a rash, right. which I get quite a few times. Well, Stan, thank you so much for picking out your selection and highlights your 2014 uh, collection. But it's not just everyday bikers you guys look after, is it? I understand you look after some very special police bikers as well. Yes, exactly. We are quite well uh, specialised in providing uh, high accessories, so uh, high premium accessories for the police officers. Jackets, pants, boots, gloves. Uh, so we provide everything in the high technology. Even for them, they are quite demanding on that terrain, I so... Uh, can imagine, yeah, well obviously they spend great testers for you as well, spend all their time on the bikes, yes. in all weather, and obviously have to deal with all situations, so yeah. it must be good R&D for you as well. It's a good opportunity for a rather small company as Richa, because it, uh, it gives us the chance and the opportunity to learn more from uh, the, f from the uh, technical and the uh, specialist market. And then we introduce that, that uh, experience into the end consumer market, so uh, into our products, the reach our products. So there you have it. From humble beginnings in the 1950s to exporting to over 25 countries worldwide, I think you can see why Risha is a company with a bit of a difference. And if you want to check out any of the products we featured on today's show or any of their other range of products, simply head to one of the over 500 outlets and dealers in the UK. With festival season just around the corner for all you musos, it got me thinking what's out there for us bikers. And then I heard about this, the annual Pro Nationals Motocross Festival here in Western Supermare. Two days of adrenaline fueled action. Let's go check it out. event like this needs a great compare and here at the Pro Nationals Motocross Festival they couldn't find one. Only joking guys they've got two great compares Paul Malin and Jeff Perrett. Jeff this is the second Pro Nationals Festival why was it decided to do one in the first place? I just think you know our sport needs a bit of elevation basically it's a specialist thing but we're taking the sport into the town effectively rather than the town coming out to us obviously so it's just a, it's just a big thing and I think it works wonders you know actually bringing it to the beach here at Western what can we expect to see this weekend? Hopefully some great action, you know. Uh, the track is built on the, uh, on the beach. 
Uh, we've got everything from 65s right the way through to quads, and those guys are going to provide entertainment as well. You know, four wheels instead of two. It's going to be a very bumpy, gnarly track, but also the action from the pro guys. Um, you know, it should be close racing. It's going to be a tight track as well. Um, and also, I think it will get graded in between, you know, races. So, you know, Saturday and Sunday's program, it will start nice and flat, but by the end of the weekend, it'll be anything but. So it's going to be pretty fast paced, high, high action, high energy. Quite looking forward to the, the whoop loop as well on Saturday night. That, from the arena cross, you know, that's one of those things that I think we can all look forward to. Jeff, it's, it's not just the racing that's going on this weekend, is it? No, that's the other thing. It's a festival feel. So there's, it's just so much going on. You know, I think there's going to be so much for people to look at when they come in. There's freestyle motocross, there's BMX displays, there's racing on the beach. Now, as ex-professional motocross racers, you must love commentating something like this. But how tough is it to race on the sand? Well, <laughs> I'll let you answer that. Well, yeah, it's one of those, um, it's definitely technique. You know, um, I know you've ridden bikes in the past before, so you know how difficult it is, but it all comes down to technique ultimately. You ride on a hard surface, it's a lot easier. If you think road bikes, um, riding on tarmac, the surface never changes, but on sand, it changes every single lap. So, what looked like a nice corner one lap ago, 30, 40 guys going through, they could have destroyed it. So you come through as the leader and find that that line's not there anymore. That can cost you, lose your time. And also you get sand in your eyes, sand in places you never knew existed. It wrecks your bike, but these guys love doing this, don't they? Oh, absolutely. Make no mistakes about it. They, um, they are just happy to be here on the Saturday the weekend and um, they're, they're race on anything, but particularly, yeah, sand is hard going. It does get in places, as you said, it shouldn't. They come in with sand, you know, all in their eyes, like they've been shot blasted, you know, all that. But they normally come in with a smile on their face, you know, so um, they're going to love it. From a spectator's point of view, I just love the start and seeing who's going to get the whole shot. So you're going to make a big deal of that? Oh, we will do, yeah. You know, the whole shot, those 40 guys heading into turn one, um, that is all part of the thrill. The start is 50% of the race itself. So, you know, hopefully everybody get through there nice and safely, but don't be surprised if there's a little bit of bar bang in action. But um, if not in the first turn, in the second turn, because those guys, they want to get to the front, don't they? And, um, and obviously you do that and you, you, you stay out of trouble in the early part of the race. That is half the battle done. So, you know, we'll G that up, don't worry. <laughs> You may be surprised to learn that there's kids as young as seven racing out there today and they race exactly the same circuit as the pros. Now for the real beginner, they can come here to the kids zone and have their first go with Wheeldon Off-Road Centre. <laughs> Joseph and Connor, your first time ever on a motocross bike. Joseph, how was it? Yeah, it was all right. Um, I liked it when I um, went miles over there. I thought you were going to go straight into that van, but you managed to miss it. Yeah, it was really good. <laughs> and Connor, I've heard that motocross is something that you want to get into. And do you still feel like that? Yeah. And what was the best thing about today? Um, how I learned like, to move my legs out. Yeah, you were really sticking your leg out. I love that. And now I've heard that you're both going over to the freestyle motocross bit to do the jumps. Is that right? Yeah. Well, it doesn't get more extreme than freestyle motocross and here wowing the crowds with their awesome jumps are the bold dog guys. Now, Dan, last time we saw you was on the arena cross tour. Yep. What have you been doing since then? I had a busy schedule, to be honest with you. I've been, uh, been out in India shooting a Bollywood film. Um, we've been here for the Pro National Festival, loads of uh, county shows as well. So, yeah, just been keeping real busy. Also did a little bit on Britain's Got Talent, so that was... Uh, that was interesting. What was Simon Cowell like? He was really nice, actually, you know, like uh, when we first met him, obviously we dragged him outside in the cold for him to come and watch this. And I don't think he was that keen on that to start with. But, you know, the comments after we'd performed were, were flattering, really, you know, and yeah, seems a real nice guy. So let's talk about the bike. You ride a CRF 450 and you said it's a bike that you can buy off the shelf. But what do you do to modify it? Yeah, this is a, it starts out as a stock CRF 450 and then we run like uh, high rise bars with no bar pads so you can get your legs through the bar. We run super flip levers for like your upside down tricks, so your super flips, um, knack flip levers, this pops out, 
and then you could hook your foot for like no-handed flips and knack flips. We cut grab holes in where the airbox is, shaved the seat down so you've got a, you know, like a decent size sort of grab. And just the suspension work, really, we do a lot of work on the suspension, stiffening it up, you know, the hard landings, and, and so it doesn't G out in the ramp. So. so how difficult is it to stunt? I mean, our producer's got this wacky idea of getting me into your um, test area where yeah, the yeah. foam pit is and having a go at, at oh, doing a jump. Sure. Yeah, we could definitely do that. You know, like we've got a great facility based in Metfield and, um, you know, we've got a massive foam pit. We've got some smaller jumps, some bigger jumps. So, yeah, it'd be a great opportunity for you to come and have a go. These mogul-type mounds are called Whoops. And here at the Pro Nationals this evening, they're hosting a brand new race called Whoop Loop. It's where 20 of the fastest riders race head-to-head -head in a series of heats, knocking each other out as they go until there's a winner who is crowned king of the Whoops. Expect short, sharp, fast racing and maybe a bit of bar banging. lost your voice after comparing the first ever whoop loop head to head racing i've got to be honest it did seem like you were making it up on the spot oh absolutely yeah it was the inaugural uh, whoop loop uh, it's an idea devised by the event organizer matt bates we've never done it before we've done head to head in uh, the arena cross tour the indoor stuff one lap but never anything like that around a loop and uh, with the whoops and uh, yeah i mean that was that was brilliant as you can tell uh, yeah, I struggled to keep my voice through that. It was really exciting. The concept was great. The crowd seemed to be right into it. And uh, that was just like a display event, really. There was no money on it. And they were still taking chunks out of each other. So if we can find a sponsor and do that and put a bit of money on it next year for these pros, then it really, the gloves would be off. It would be like WWE wrestling, I think. entire weekend I've heard our racing on the sand just completely wrecks the bike. Steve as team manager for a Pico Maxxis LPE Kawasaki how true is this? Uh, there's a certain amount of truth in it it's more to do with the salt water uh, the sand itself isn't too bad it's the salt water when the, when the tide's coming in or it's raining the water's coming through the sand it can it can uh, do things to the bike it's uh, all about the preparation you've got to prepare your bike a lot more for a race on the beach than you would normally at a normal track day. So it doesn't need an entirely new engine then after this weekend? No, but we'll, uh, we'll strip the engine and rebuild it after this weekend. What we've done, we've used the bike that we've been using all season and after this race we'll rotate all the race bikes round so that we use a fresh bike for the next round of the, of the Maxxis. Uh, so this engine after this race will be stripped and rebuilt and the frame, it'll be stripped to a bare frame, all new bearings and everything put in, so building like a fresh bike. It sounds like a very expensive weekend. Why do it? Because, I mean, obviously, Gert, he races in the M MX1 British Championship and this doesn't go towards any of his points for the year. So why decide to do a weekend like this? Just because uh, I know that Matt Bates put an ex he puts an excellent event on and the Red Bull Pro Nationals unfortunately isn't running this year and this is the, the one-off standalone event, the Pro Nationals Festival. And we wanted to come because we knew it would be very good and it is. It's just a shame about the weather but it's the same for everybody. And it is a fantastic event with top riders, top class racing and to come away, if we can uh, end the day on the podium in the top three, it'd be a big achievement and we'll have achieved what we set out to come and do. racing out there this weekend on the beach yeah it's uh, like you know it's quite sandy but uh, uh, the track is getting uh, quite tough at the moment uh, with the rain this weekend so uh, hopefully the uh, rain is gonna hold off and we can we can have some good racing it looks so physical I mean how fit do you have to be to, to race a 25 minute race is it yeah it is yeah it's uh, it is tough but uh, we're uh, full-time athletes we work uh, during the week really hard and uh, yeah, I like when the tra track is stuff that uh, shows who, who's done the work during the week. Something I've really enjoyed watching this weekend is the quad racing. Gary, firstly, thank you for letting me borrow your coat. That's all I'm right. absolutely you're freezing. <laughs> well, now, obviously, you're a pro racer and you race throughout the UK quad bikes. What's the quad bike scene like? Um, it's very exciting. I've been doing it for 20 years now um, and we get from the little kids, six or seven years old, right up to people my age, over in their 40s. And um, yeah, it's really good fun, good friendly thing. 
So how popular is it? Um, I think it's a bit of a minority sport, but at uh, quad race meetings we get up to 100 bikes at some of the Nora rounds. So today maybe limited numbers, maybe 25 because of the, the sand and stuff and, and other races on. But um, yeah, it's good. Now I was saying to you earlier on that I thought racing four wheels would, would be a little bit safer than racing on two, but actually you think differently. Yeah, I've raced two wheels and four wheels and um, while you stay on them it's great, just like a bike, but when you, when you come off it generally goes wrong in a big way, so um, try and stay on all four wheels. You said that when you fall off it tends to follow you. It always comes after you, two crashes with a quad, one when you hit the floor, two when it lands on top of you. How expensive is it to buy a quad? I mean obviously I know it just depends I suppose what kind of bike you're going for, but... As much as you want to spend really, for, for a beginner, um, you know, you can go in nice and low budget and start maybe a £1,000 will get you going and then, you know, up to the pro level you can spend as much as you can afford and, um, but I think the, the key thing for quad racing is fitness for the, most sports is what you put in is what you'll get out.